wanted to be a social worker. There was no social work program at the University of Texas. So I went to the University of Wisconsin in Madison, where they did have a social work degree. And, but what happened is after I graduated, that I went to Dallas. Well, there weren't any social work jobs. Uh, I didn't realize that why there was no social work department at UT, there wouldn't be any jobs when I got out anyway. So I decided I would go to Los Angeles and I had a job lined up with uh, being a travel, being a tour guide. Then the whole company went under. So I started job hunting. Then I got hired at the big radio station, KHJ. They were the number one station and they were in Southern California and radio was everything. My boss was a man named Art Kevin. He was a veteran newsman. He wrote an editorial every week. And what he wanted was someone to do the research to come up and find somebody who had an opposing view. That was my job. I loved it. I thought it was great. And then I got the person to come in. I was the only woman in the news department. There were none. I remember at the time people saying no one wants to hear women's voices. I always thought that was strange. Being young, I thought that. Why would that bother anybody? No, women couldn't do these jobs. But the men in that newsroom, and they were veteran newsmen, because besides being a big radio station with music, it was well known for the news department. So the men showed me how to edit. They showed me how to write a news story. They told me the rules would be, it has to be accurate, it should be crisp, and it should be short. And so that's how I learned it. And I needed to find a job that paid me more, even though I loved working at the radio station. So what I did was I decided I would come back to the University of Texas and take some graduate classes to see what I wanted to do. So I go over to KUT, which is the news operation on campus, and I apply for a job. The news director asked me to read some copy. Well, I wasn't worried. I didn't plan on being on the air. He hired me. So then he sent me to cover City Hall, which was fascinating at the time because Austin was a growing city and there was a nuclear power plant they were arguing over or trees and there were tree huggers, people who wanted to do something environmentally. So I, I learned a lot. And that's when I realized that I really love being a reporter. And then I decided that I was going to move to Houston. Number one in Texas, 13, Eyewitness News. And so I got hired by one of the big TV stations in Houston. And what the news director said to me, he was very glad that I hadn't gone through the School of Communication. He liked the fact that I'd studied history and English and government and lots of other classes. He thought that was helpful. And being a reporter then, it did help me by having a working knowledge of things. And so I was lucky that I was hired there. Women were supposed to get married the parents sent you to school to get your MRS degree. Well, in my case, I always wanted to be a professional. I had no idea what that profession would be. And so I kept trying different things. One of the things that would happen too was the Vietnam War. And when I was at the University of Wisconsin, it was a very radical school, but that was perfect for me. And there were protests. They even blew, it, blew up part of the administration building towards the end of school where you couldn't even drop a class or something. My family thought that I should get married. <laughs> and so <laughs> they really thought I was making a mistake being a single woman. I did not want to get married. And so that was, my mother would suggest being like a dental hygienist. I was a germ freak. No, that would not be a good job for me. I knew I needed something to, that I could have as a career because my parents got a divorce. My mother didn't have a job. She hadn't been trained for anything. I, I was probably trained for everything. Didn't know what I wanted to do, but that was very important to me to be successful at whatever I was doing and in, like what I was doing. And that's how I love being a reporter. I love doing that. I'll give you a good example. When I was covering City Hall in Houston, Kathy Whitmire was the mayor. She dressed and looked like Tootsie. 
From the movie, she looked like the Dustin Hoffman character. So the news director wanted me to go do a story about Kathy Whitmire's clothes and her hair, which I didn't do a story about the previous mayor, who was a man, about his hair and his clothes. But I had a rule. I, I just thought if I'm going to be fired about something I want to stand up for, that's okay. I, I'm not going to do everything they want if I think it's wrong. And it was wrong. There were times when being a woman was important. If it was a health story, the newsmen and whoever's the assignment editor a lot of times didn't care about anything. But women knew if it was breast cancer or some other one and, and and abuse, sexual abuse, divorce, and it was the time of AIDS. And the station I was at did not want to do a story about AIDS. And so I had told one of the producers, one of the 10 o'clock producers, about this movement that was going on and how afraid people were. Turns out he was gay. He wanted to run the story on the 10 o'clock news, but the station wouldn't let him. It took Rock Hudson, the movie star, to have AIDS and Elizabeth Taylor to step in and go, we've got to raise money for these people. But before that, it was all under the surface. And even if you found out a good story, you were not to do it. I do think that they can do some stories that maybe someone else wasn't interested in. I think the most blatant for me was at one of the big television stations in Houston, one of the older male uh, stars there, said to me in the newsroom, I want to touch your breasts. Well, I knew I couldn't yell at him. I knew he was the star there. So what I did was I stayed an arm's length away from him all the time. If it was a copy I needed to give him, I would just put it there. And so that was shocking. And I knew he had done it to one other woman there and said terrible things to her. And But there are other women who I'm close to now who he did that to them and they didn't know that it had been done to me. We didn't talk about it. And we also all knew that we would be fired. He wouldn't be fired. There was no Me Too movement, not, not even close. And so... We had to make, you had to make your own choices of what you, how you would handle every situation. And I just felt so strong about things that I figured out a way to blunt whatever they were doing. I want to tell you about some of the stories that I remember the most. And one had to do with Houston Mayor Fred Hoffines. And he was a wonderful person and very handsome and he gets up from the council desk and he goes into the men's bathroom at City Hall. All of the male reporters follow him into the bathroom at City Hall. So did I. I didn't say a word. I moved myself to the front, not, not blocking anybody, but I wasn't hiding in the back either. And all of a sudden, all of the men realized there's a woman in the men's bathroom. <laughs> So the mayor especially would not have liked the optics. So he walks out into the hall and all of us got to ask him a question. And he never did it where he ran in the bathroom and male reporters were following him because he knew I'd be there too. <laughs> Ann Richards was the governor. The Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, and her husband, Prince Philip, were coming to Austin. So she invited several of us to a special uh event with the with the queen and prince philip there were only about 25 of us i was shocked i thought there'd be lots of people i also knew that they really weren't going to talk to us when we, the prince and the queen when we went through the receiving line well prince philip started talking to me <laughs> and i sounded like total baby babble <laughs> I was so shocked and I kind of blurted something out and then moved down. And as it turned out, the queen had waited for a couple of us and we actually got to talk to her. She was super smart, super nice. She would never known that she was the queen of England. After that, after I talked to her, I ran on the other side of the room and I saw Prince Philip and I ran up to him and I said, I'm so sorry. I sounded like baby babble. 
but I was shocked about what you talking to me. But I had covered your son, Charles, at NASA and other places, and he's very smart. Prince Philip says, of course he is. He has intelligent parents. <laughs> It allowed me to have a career and and a salary for something that I really love doing. And I got to meet a lot of people and I got to cover a lot of things that were fascinating. And so it really was the perfect job for me, even though I never thought it would be. And some people grow up thinking they want to be a doctor or they want to be a nurse. They want to be a dentist. No, I was an open book. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>